today we look at Advanced Star Biology Unit 3, Investigative Biology, Carrier 2, Experimentation, specifically sampling reliability and the presentation of data. We'll explain um, why only a sample of a population may be used. We'll talk about factors affecting sample size and how it can be made random, systematic or stratified. We'll look at how variation in experimental results could be caused. Describe how the reliability of different pieces of equipment can be found. How the variation of biological sample can be measured. And explain the range of measured values and what this suggests. And finally, we'll describe how the overall reliability of an experiment can be found. For moving on to looking at qualitative, quantitative and ranked data. Um, we will look at the correlation between two variables and what this demonstrates and explain the difference between correlation and causation. Finally, we will end by looking at positive negative correlations and what their strengths demonstrate. We've stated before in previous videos that the purpose of the pilot study was partially to find the lowest effective sample size that we could take. Um, where it's impractical to measure every individual in a population, a representative sample must be found. One consideration when determining the appropriate sample size is the extent of natural variation with the population. More variable populations will obviously require a larger sample size. Um, to identify the sample size, we should remember that a representative sample taken from a population should share its mean and the degree of variation found in the original population as a whole. The three different ways to organise sampling. We can use random sampling where members of a population have an equal chance of being selected. This is common within ecological studies, um, which can use random numbers to select quadrats for sampling. So you can see any of these people had an equally likely chance of getting picked, but it was very random. In systematic sampling, um, members of a population are selected at regular intervals. This can be carried out with line or belt transects to systematically sample an environment. Whereas in stratified sampling, the population is divided into categories that are then sampled proportionally. This can help if we then have to use a randomised block trial because it ensures that we have reasonably an equal number from each of the particular groups. It could be used to sample habitats that are not very uniform, using a standard formula, which luckily we don't need to know, to calculate the number of samples from each area. It's not realistic in biological systems to expect all the measurements of an independent variable to be identical and variation in the results can be due to either the reliability of the measurement methods or and or the inherent variation in the specimens. So the reliability of the equipment or procedures can be determined by repeatedly measuring a single data point. The variation observed indicates the precision of the measured uh, measurement uh, instrument or the procedure, but not necessarily its accuracy. So if you keep sampling the same thing, you really should get the same result. The variation observed indicates the precision of the experiment, but not its accuracy. Uh, prior to a large study, it's common to calibrate any equipment to be used in the study against a sample of known quantity to ensure that a sufficient level of accuracy and precision can be found. Repeated measurements, which give concurrent results, give a, more, uh, a measure of precision, while measurements against the known solution should show accuracy. It's also important to ensure that researchers within a team carry out the standardisation part of the experiment to ensure that they themselves are competent, able to measure the known solution and obtain accurate and precise results. The natural variation in biological material uh, used can be determined by measuring a sample of individuals from the population. The mean of these repeated measurements will give an indication of the true value being measured. The range of values is a measure of the extent of variation in the results. If there is a narrow range, then the variation within the population is obviously quite low. So if we repeatedly were to measure sparrow wing length, we might find that actually you kept getting a very similar answer, and that would suggest that uh, the variation in their population was quite low, which may or may not be haven't checked. There are many terms used when we describe data. We can have qualitative data, 
which tend to be subjective and descriptive. So if we ask students to give feedback describing their enjoyment of a given set of lessons, their responses would likely be qualitative unless they were asked to rate it from a 1 to 10. So if they said it was good or I liked this or I would change that, then that is qualitative feedback. Quantitative, so quantities, can be measured objectively using a uh, usually with a numerical value. This can include either continuous or discrete variation. When we rank data, we sort it from lowest to highest and then number them based on this order. Um, the type of variation being investigated has consequences for any graphical display or statistical test being used. When continuous data is graphed, it can show that there is correlation between a change in the independent variable and a corresponding change in the dependent. Statistical tests are used to produce what's called an R value, which tells us how strong or weak this correlation is. The correlation strength is proportional to how far from the line of best fit the data spreads. So we can see at the top left, um, there's a strong positive correlation as variable B increases, so does variable A increase. All the data points seem to hug quite close to the line of best fit, so there's quite a consistent and uh, strong correlation. Similarly, in the uh, graph at the top right, there's a consistent strong negative correlation, um, which is maintained. In the bottom left, there is still a line of best fit. It very likely is the same as the one directly above it. But in this case, that is formed from very different um, data points, which have a weak positive correlation and the bottom right a weak negative correlation. We've described uh, sampling in terms of why it's used, random, systematic and stratified sampling. We've explained how variation in experimental results can be caused. We looked at reliability both of the measuring equipment and of the researchers using it. Described how variation in biological materials can be measured, so a sample and explained what the range of measured variables suggests. So it suggests variation in the population or that you haven't precisely or accurately measured it. And we've described the overall reliability of an experiment and how it can be found. We've then gone on to describe the features of qualitative, quantitative and ranked data. We've explained correlation in terms of positive, negative and the strength of that correlation.